semiconductor diodes. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe semiconductors in terms of resistance and free electrons. Describe n-type and p-type semiconductors. Describe semiconductor diodes. Describe the function of diodes. These are the earlier models of a television and a radio. These are the newer models of a television and a radio. What can you say about the sizes of the televisions and radios? Can you identify some of the components? These components are made of semiconductor materials. What are semiconductor materials? Materials can be classified in terms of their ability to conduct electricity. Hence, materials can be classified as insulators, conductors, and semiconductors. Insulators are materials that do not conduct electricity. Why? Insulators such as rubber and wood do not conduct electricity because they have almost no free electrons. This is because electrons are bound tightly to the nuclei. Thus, we say that the resistances of insulators are very high. Conductors such as metals have many free electrons. Thus, conductors have low resistance. In conductors, current is due to the flow of electrons. If no potential difference is applied, electrons in a conductor move randomly at high speeds. What will happen if a potential difference is applied across a conductor? When a potential difference is applied across a conductor, electrons will move in the same direction towards the positive terminal and current is produced. Semiconductors are materials with electrical conductivity somewhere between that of insulators and conductors. Silicon and germanium are pure semiconductor elements, while gallium arsenide and cadmium selenide are semiconductor compounds. What can you say about the number of free electrons in semiconductors? What can you say about the resistance of the semiconductors? The number of free electrons in semiconductors is less than those in a conductor. Hence, semiconductors have higher resistance than conductors. At low temperatures, Almost all of the electrons in a semiconductor are bound to the nuclei. Without free electrons, semiconductors behave as insulators. As temperature increases, some of the electrons have sufficient energy to break away from the bonds and become free electrons. Thus, at high temperatures, Semiconductors behave like conductors. These are simplified crystal structures of pure semiconductor elements, silicon and germanium.
Semiconductors that consist of pure materials are known as intrinsic semiconductors. Silicon and germanium are elements found in group 4 of the periodic table. Each element has four valence electrons on its outermost orbit. These four valence electrons are shared with its surrounding atoms. What will happen to the electrons when the surrounding temperature of the semiconductor is varied? Drag on the slider to vary the surrounding temperature. At low temperatures, the atoms are stable and there are almost no free electrons. With the increase in temperature, some electrons gain enough energy to break free from the rigid structure and become free electrons. The vacancy that a free electron creates is called a hole and it is positively charged. What will happen if a potential difference is applied across a semiconductor? When a potential difference is applied, the free electrons are attracted to the positive terminal. The valence electrons in the neighboring atoms are then pushed to occupy these holes, but in the process, create other holes which will later be occupied by other electrons. The process sees an overall movement of holes in one direction and movement of electrons in the opposite direction. The movement of electrons and holes contributes to the flow of current. The number of free electrons and holes in a pure semiconductor is low. What can you say about the ability to conduct electricity or the conductivity of a pure semiconductor? Since the number of electrons and holes in a pure semiconductor is low, thus its ability to conduct electricity or conductivity is low too. How could the conductivity of a pure semiconductor be increased? The conductivity of a pure semiconductor can be increased by increasing the number of free electrons and the number of holes. How would you increase the number of free electrons? To increase the number of free electrons, small amounts of other substances, called impurities, are added to the pure semiconductor. The process of adding small but controlled amounts of impurities is called doping. Semiconductors doped with impurities are known as extrinsic semiconductors. How many valence electrons does an arsenic atom have? An arsenic atom is a pentavalent atom and therefore has five valence electrons. Arsenic is placed in group 5 in the periodic table. When arsenic is added to a pure semiconductor, the arsenic atom has one more electron than is needed 
to bond with the atoms in the semiconductor. This results in a free Atoms that increase the number of free electrons in a semiconductor are called donor atoms. The free electrons become the major charge carriers in the doped material. This type of material is called the N-type semiconductor. What will happen if an atom in group 3 such as gallium, is doped into a pure semiconductor. Elements in group 3, such as gallium, are trivalent elements, therefore have three valence electrons. When the trivalent element gallium is added, there will be a deficiency of one electron needed to bond with atoms in the pure semiconductor. A hole is then created. A valence electron from a nearby atom can move and fill the hole, but this movement will create a new hole in the place where the electron originally was. Atoms that increase the number of holes in a semiconductor are called receiver atoms. Since the doping of trivalent elements will introduce more holes in the pure semiconductor, holes are therefore termed as the majority charge carriers. This type of material is called a p-type semiconductor. In n-type semiconductors, the impurity atoms have more valence electrons than are needed for bonding with semiconductor atoms. In p-type semiconductors, the impurity atoms are deficient in valence electrons compared to the pure semiconductors. What happens when the p-type and the n-type semiconductors completely touch each other on the sides? When the p-type and the n-type semiconductors completely touch each other on the sides, a p-n junction is formed. What happens at the junction? At the junction, the electrons from the n-type region move to the p-type region to recombine with the equivalent number of holes. The recombination of free electrons and holes at the junction leaves a narrow region on either side of the junction called the depletion region. This is a region where there is a depletion of mobile charge carriers that prevents further electron transfer. At the junction, the n-type region forms positive ions because of a deficiency of electrons and the p-type region forms negative ions because of an excess of electrons. This results in a potential difference across the central region. An electronic device made from a p-n junction is the semiconductor diode. A semiconductor diode has two electrodes. A band is used to indicate the n-type region. 
The other end is the p-type region. Thus, the wire nearest the band is the cathode, and the other end is the anode. A semiconductor diode is connected in series to a set of dry cells. The diode is said to be forward biased. What does forward bias mean? A semiconductor diode is said to be in forward biased when the p-type of the diode is connected to the positive terminal, while the n-type is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. What happens when a semiconductor diode is forward biased? When a semiconductor diode is forward biased, the electrons in the n-type material move towards the left across the junction and combine with the holes in the p-type material. The electrons can then proceed further towards the left by jumping from hole to hole. The holes can be said to be moving to the right in this process. Since the electrons combine readily with the holes, a continuous forward current through the junction is produced. Thus, the bulb lights up. The diode can also be reversed biased. What does reverse bias mean? A semiconductor diode is reverse biased when the p-type of the diode is connected to the negative terminal, while the n-type is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. What happens when a semiconductor diode is reverse biased? When the semiconductor diode is reverse biased, the electrons in the n-type material are pulled away from the junction as they move to the right towards the positive terminal. Since the p-type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery, the holes can be said to be moving to the left and pulled away from the junction. What happens when the electrons in the semiconductor diode are pulled to the right and holes to the left. The pulling of electrons to the right and holes to the left causes the width of the depletion zone to increase. Increase in the width of the depletion zone increases the potential barrier. Resistance against the flow of charge carriers also increases which results in a very small or no current flow across the junction. Thus, the bulb does not light up. What can you say about the resistance of the diode when it is forward biased and reverse biased? When a diode is forward biased, current is allowed to flow 
from the anode to the cathode. This indicates that the resistance is low in a forward biased diode. When a diode is reverse biased, it has a very high resistance and thus does not allow any flow of electricity. Hence, a diode is said to allow current to flow in one direction only. A typical characteristic of a silicon diode is shown. The forward current is small until the forward voltage is about 0.6 volts. Then a very small change in voltage causes a large increase in current. The reversed current is very small or negligible and remains so as the reversed voltage is increased. A circuit consisting of five diodes has been set up. A CRO is used to display the output voltage supply across diode X. What will be the display on the CRO if a direct voltage is supplied to the circuit? Drag and drop the possible CRO trace in the box.